Hello you guys, welcome back again for day eight. I can't believe we are already on the eighth day of the challenge. And today we are going to do this adorable golden retriever in a Santa hat and a sleigh, just kind of a fun little holiday scene. Um, if you didn't know, I absolutely love painting dogs. And even though this is just a really fun, loose study of a dog, um, I'm actually going to teach the um, a dog portrait portrait masterclass on December twelfth. So mark your calendars. That is day twelve of this challenge. I'll be te teaching that one live um, at uh, on my channel here. So December twelfth at twelve p.m. Central Time. I have not announced the dog that we are doing yet. So stay tuned. So excited. Um, and today let's just have some fun, and we will just have a nice little loose um, portrait of this cute golden retriever. So I recommend having a variety of brushes. This is um, a very small um, detail work within the uh, within the face. We aren't doing a ton of details, but it's helpful to have a really small brush here. I have a triple zero and something a little bit larger just to paint the sled. Let's paint the background area first. So the and what I mean by background is like the gifts and the sled. I'm not going to necessarily put a background, but I will put like some snow that the, the sleigh and the dog is sitting on top of. So, oops, I already dropped a little water. Let's just click, there we go, soak that up. Okay, back to my medium size brush, um, a size three pointed round. Let's go ahead and start with our sleigh. So that's going to be a lot of the browns and yellow ochres. So here's my burnt umber. I'll just go ahead and get that wet since it's dry for starting fresh for the day. And here we have that. And it's going to be a mix of that and then also the yellow ochre. So kind of like we've done before, we've mixed up some browns and some light tans. That's the color I'm going for, for the base. So not a lot of paint. Um, and mostly water on my brush. I will start to just paint in these little slats, these wood slats of this old wood sleigh that people love to um, decorate with. So we'll do that and then I'll even get rid of some of that paint on my brush and pick up a little bit of warm water. And again, we will add in the detailed layers on top. So it looks kind of like a gold color right now, and I will darken that up um, once we get um, a little bit farther. The back pieces are definitely going to be darker since they're sitting in a little bit more of a shadowed area. So I'll just finish up this front, and like that. Now these back sleigh pieces, those will be darker. So we'll grab our burnt umber or any type of brown. And I like to mix that with the Payne's Gray, as you already know. And so something that's just nice. Oops, that was a lot. Payne's Gray is a really strong color. Um, so you don't need a lot of it. Okay, there I have my dark color. Let's just go ahead and put some back here and see how that's coming through. Pretty dark. I'll get rid of that paint on my brush now and just use a little bit more water, less paint, so it's not quite so dark. As well as over here. And working our way up. It'll be important to add in some warmer brown tones. Um, but first, Go ahead and continue on with that same color. That's a great color to use underneath like this part of the sleigh here, just for the shadowed areas. To make it look a little more dimensional. Maybe right there along where the dog is blocking or sitting in front of the sleigh here. And let's do a little bit right here and underneath where the top is. Probably make that even a little bit darker. Okay, so something like that. 
and let's add in now some richer medium brown tones especially for the back so here's that burnt umber with a little bit of residual um, of that last little bit of the Payne's gray and that'll be kind of what I use for the top here and you can kind of see a little bit right here these little pieces of the sleigh like that okay and underneath and I'm just going to take a clean brush and kind of sweep along here just so I can clean up any residual and water that has bleached or blended into the other part of the sleigh. There's just a little bit of a warmer brown too, just to show a little more color. Okay. So I think that looks pretty good for our sleigh for now. Let's move on to the presents in the back here and we can make them let's see we want them to contrast now and be so we have a red santa hat on our dog maybe a little bit of red in the presence here so here i have my elzarian crimson which is almost like a uh i don't know more like a pinky red it feels like and then i'll add a little bit of a darker color to that don't want it super red so I added a little Payne's Gray to that to make it more of a cranberry color, kind of like we did in the Nutcracker. And I'm actually going to do this one in that color. So it's a little bit of a distance away from where the Santa hat is. Be careful if this part is still wet. You don't want it to bleed into the sleigh. We'll just paint our first coat here. Work around that other present. All right. And now, if you need to, you can just grab a little bit of that paint up if you have too much. The back area here is going to be even darker, so one or two little drops of that paints gray on your brush to add to your um, paint mixture just to make it a little bit darker to show that square cube shape all right kind of hard to see there and again if it looks too dark I like the richness of the colors but I can just show you with your clean brush just scoop some of that up that really helps to brighten it up on the front all right that was a pretty color for our present there let's paint our next one and let's see i kind of think that we should do that one in let's see let's see i don't know maybe we should just keep with traditional colors and do green but not that bright sap green we'll add a little bit of Paints gray to that as well, just to make it kind of a darker green. All right, and being very careful again to not run it into anything. I'm working around our ribbon bow. And also being careful not to run it into the dog all right I wonder if our ribbons we could kind of let's see what we could do for our ribbon color I have to wait for that to dry first for our package or our present so we'll come back to that um, but for now, let's move on to our dog. So the hat is going to be a traditional Santa hat, which is going to be much brighter than the color that we were using for this cranberry color on our present. So really just that true Elzerian crimson will work out really nicely. 
So I have a decent amount of paint on my brush, as you can kind of see here, and I'll just kind of paint along the edges as well as down here where it would be the darkest. And then I will get rid of the paint on my brush for the most part, just dab it off. I might have a little bit left and then I can kind of blend it out so it's not quite so dark. Okay. There's our little Santa. For the um, white fur that Santa had, that's where I like to use that paint's gray to kind of show that shadow, or not shadow, kind of shadows within the white, but um, just that extra little dimension. So here I have my paint's gray, mostly water. I'll dab my paper towel, and I will just work right along the where the hat meets the dog. And I'll just keep the... Uh, the white of the hat up top here and then I'll add a little bit of that same color down into the little floof at the bottom of the hat alrighty so now let's go ahead and work on our golden retriever and that for color is going to be a mix of the yellow ochre and a little bit of the burnt umber and then again I will add some bits of the burnt sienna in there just to help warm it up but right now let's just do a base layer of the yellow ochre and um, the burnt umber um, I don't need a whole lot on my brush but again this is this is just a fun light-hearted tutorial of this little uh, golden retriever illustration it's not how I paint my more detailed face portraits of dogs and cats, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a quicker. So we're just going to fill in this whole part of his body. Alright, let's see. Let's add a little more over here. It's a little bit lighter around the chest area. Sometimes golden retrievers will have that little white patch on the front. But again, just filling it all in. I'm leaving the face because I'm going to do that one separately. I'm kind of running out of my mixture, so I'll quick put one together here. It's going to be a little bit darker, so I'll just add that into the tail. Okay, so just as you can see, a very light base layer, and what we need to do now is pretty much let that dry. I'm just going to go back through and add in a little bit of a darker color in a few places, so that burnt umber right here on the leg, on the back leg here, and then also down underneath where there's just a lot more shadowed area and as well as kind of as those arms work its way up into the chest. So this is really just blending and not being super detailed. We'll paint in some more details once that dries. Let's do the base layer of our face. So here I have my yellow ochre again. Pan that same mixture. But I just really don't need a lot. So dab your paper towel and let's work on filling in the face, working around some of those features like the eyes. And then the front part of his nose is a little bit white around the muzzle, so we'll leave that. And working our way up into that ear. So that's what I have, super, super basic right now. Let's grab a little bit of our burnt umber, which I need to actually pour a little bit more out soon, and a little bit of the Payne's Gray mixture. So not a ton of Payne's Gray, but just a little bit. And I just want to drop it in kind of where some shadowed areas would be. So right around the ears and right where the hat meets the head, maybe along the outer edge of the like some of the arm area there and 
around the back side of the legs. I'm working a little fast just because I want it to not dry. I want it to be able to blend and then we'll just add a little bit into the tail. So very basic. Let's let our puppy dry for a little bit and instead let's go back through and do our bows or our ribbon. And let's see, that could be an even brighter red would look really pretty, I think. So I might just go ahead and complement the bright red from the hat. So here I have my red, and I'm going to mix a little bit of orange actually into that just so it's nice and crimson. So let's first do it on the green package here. I'm really just filling in those shapes. Oops. If you're like me, be careful with the dog if it's still wet. If you need to, you can just scoop some of that up, but we'll layer on top of that, so no big deal. So there I just have my little red ribbon, and I'll do the same for my other one. And I'll do like a little bow at the top. And down along the side. Wow, that really did bleed. I had quite a lot of water on my dog here, so I'll just scoop it up again. Again, don't panic. We'll add in another layer, but if you can kind of scoop it up, that is helpful. Let's go through and paint some of that snow before we do any details and if you saw in the last video tutorial on the cabin I love mixing blues to create that snow so we will grab any type of blue really but an ultramarine blue is really nice and then I like to always add in a little bit of Payne's gray Mostly water, just a little bit of that. You can even add water first, but here's a little bit of a area where he's sitting in that snow. And same with up here where the sleigh is sitting. And right here, underneath our dog. And I like to just kind of leave texture for the sleigh, or for the snow under the sleigh and the dog. So again, what I'm actually going to do is help break up that true blue color right there. And I'm just going to add in a little um, Payne's Gray. So let's grab a little Payne's Gray. And just going to drop that in underneath and wherever it would be the darkest, like right underneath our dog here. Just go ahead and add some more. Now it's up to you and how far you want to bring that snow down into the forefront. I just think this would make such a cute card. I hope you're able to use your paintings in other ways than just this fun practice. Maybe use them as cards. You can hang them up on a garland string. You could scan them in and create some other fun products. This would be a really cute mug. Okay. That's what I'll do right there for our... Um, for the snow for now let's switch I'm going to make an even smaller or switch to an even smaller brush right now and this is where I want to paint in a little bit more of the facial details so I will grab typically what I would do is use Payne's gray and brown to create my blacks oops I forgot I need to squeeze out a little bit more 
with that burnt umber. It's like one of my most used colors. And so here I am creating that black like color. And being very careful, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit, being really careful not to um, paint if the, the background is still wet of your dog. Now this is not going to be perfect. We just need to create a little bit of an outline for where the eye sits. And so that's all I did right there and we will, I will fill that in. Again, this is such a small painting. So now let's do the little nose. So I'm just really using very light pressure of my brush and I will paint in those real details. So the nostrils right there. And again, we're gonna fill this in. And then now his cute little mouth. Okay, so that's, um, that's that for right now. We will fill in those other pieces. I'm just gonna switch to a little bit of a bigger brush. And what I wanna do is use barely any of that Payne's Gray brown mixture, barely any, and not a lot of water, but that's what's going to help blend in the area like around the nose and also his little eyes. Trying so hard to leave maybe just a little bit of white Super um, lighthearted little il illustration. So I also want to now blend in. I really just got rid of most of that on my brush, but I'm just going to use a little bit and that's going to pull it down around the muzzle area. So it's not super stark white right there. Okay, let's add details to our dog in the fur. So our burnt umber. And going to use a decent amount of that, just so it's darker on my brush. Not much water, so then now I'm able to really control. So that's the line that divides the ear to the face. And we have another one over here. Where the ear is just a little bit darker. Let's get rid of some of that paint on our brush by just adding a little water and dabbing our paper towel. And this is where we want to use just a little bit of a mount to create some shadow areas. So we have a shadow kind of where that hat sits right on top of the dog's head and right around the eyes as well as working our way down around his muzzle. So that seems a little stark. Let's get rid of all the paint, dab our paper towel, and then I will just try to blend in what I have. So it's not super um, like a stark line. So I'm just taking my pretty dry damp brush with no color and I just smoothed those lines but it really created a nice um, little dimension. Let's grab more paint of that brown and let's paint some fun little hairs around the chest. So they have these really nice long hairs that kind of work their way around. So again you can kind of paint them in fun little directions, and then grabbing a little water, you can smooth some of those down. Repeat that process, not a lot of paint on my brush. So working our way down here, there's going to be a lot more of a shadow here around the tummy. And again, 
some longer um, hairs down the center. I think I was having trouble here. I didn't notice that, but my snow went over my dog. So no big deal. I will just help cover that with a little bit of brown. We'll do the same over here. Picking up a little bit more to help darken this area right here. All right. So there I have a lot of fun little wispy hairs. Just blot a few of those. And I forgot we need to add some to the lower half of our tail for our little dog. Okay. Super cute. Now, if you want to go back through and add more dimension into our, into your sled here, just grab more of that burnt umber and that's what you can do to help create some more shadows in dimension. You can always add that same burnt, or burnt umber into the Payne's Gray. And like that. I think it turned out so cute. If you want to, you can always use the bleed proof white to go back through and correct anything or even add it into the snow or let's see. So I will go through and add it a few little splotches right here. And add some just kind of sporadic. if you needed to add it into the dog's face or into the chest here there's a little bit of white spot there it's always a great way to add in a little more detail if you need to and again I kind of had a little bit of an oops there with the snow but another good way to create some detail and again feel free to darken up some areas like with our bow here just kind of outline that little piece to show the bow any little easy little detail layers at the end really do make a difference there alrighty I hope you all had a really fun time painting this one I really enjoyed um, painting something a little more lighthearted than always doing such detailed paintings that I do with portraits. So if you, again, are participating, I know I always say this at the end of every video, but I love seeing your paintings. Thank you so much for sharing them. And please tag me at Windswept Design Studio on Instagram, and I will record your painting for the challenge. Again, you could win a free entry into my Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course. So please, please share your paintings, and I can't wait to see them, and I will see you all in tomorrow's painting.